In a case which I had uh, <coughs> with cancer of the breast with metastasis in the brain and in the bones, I suspected platina in this case. So I asked her how was sexually, how she was feeling sexually. And, uh, and uh, I asked her, uh, because she was in that terrible state with one eaten up, the bone on, on the joint was eaten up, and she was in pain, she was uh, with brain metastasis. I thought most probably she cannot have a relation, a rela relationship. Most probably she is masturbating. So I asked her whether she was masturbating and how many times. She says 40 times a day. 40. <laughs> for zero. I see a lot of platinas here. They are not uh, surprised with the. <laughs> 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 40 times a day. I mean, she was not doing anything else, eh? I said, oh, I, I got her. I was taking this case with, Ale with uh, Alexandra, you know, the, the doctor who taught you the taking of the case, the American doctor. <laughs> I said, okay, platina tenem. She, she took uh, platina and uh, this was a, a case that really, I mean, really it's uh, one of these cases that you don't believe that homeopathy can do something. Metastasis, eight places in the brain and several places in the bone with painkillers trying to keep down the pains. She came in crutches, she entered the, with the crutches. She came on a wheelchair. She had actually telephoned. It's very interesting because very instructive, this case. She had telephoned through a clinic in London that she wanted to see me. So somebody from the clinic telephoned, and I said, no, forget it. I, don't, I cannot take such a case. Eh? We can do nothing. Metastasis in the brain already and in the bones, forget it. She insisted, and they telephoned again. I said, please see her one, because she's so insisting that you must see her. I said, no, forget it. They telephoned three to third time. She said, she said, the woman was telephoning from London. She said, she will pay you 10,000 pounds for one visit. I said, one million pounds, no way. Forget it. I cannot do anything, forget it. Then, one month passed, 20 days passed, and somebody who is my friend, a Greek friend of mine who has supported homeopathy all along, he telephones, he says, George, please can you see a friend of a friend from London? <laughs> <laughs> I did not connect, I did not connect. I did not, she has cancer, she has cancer, no other information, she has cancer. I said, uh, well, okay, tell her to come. <laughs> then she comes, then she comes, and she tells me the story. I said, you are the one that you have been trying to get. I told you I cannot do anything for you. She said, no, you're going to cure me. <laughs> I said, please, I cannot do anything. I tried to, to tell her to go away. I tried again and again to persuade her. She said, she said to me, something very strange, of course. She said, I know you're going to cure me. Uh, why? She said, because I have spoken with God twice. One time, and she related the time. And another time, I spoke with God, and, I, and God told me, that you go to George Vizulkas. <laughs> I said, never mind the God. I tell you that there is no way. Can you understand this? No. 
And then we were forced to take the case, and the case developed in a such a way as to become platina case. And I asked the final question. I said, how many times do you masturbate? This is 40. 40. Thank you very much. I mean, what's going to happen now? Very interesting, this woman was from Australia. And she hated her mother, and her mother hated her and cursed her. Curse, the mother cursed this woman. That she dies, we can't this. And this patient cursed her mother. And such tremendous hatred I've never seen in my life. As a result, whew, the explosion of the cancer. Huh? It was very interesting because her mother was very rich, really, but she did not have much money. Yet, she was living on borrowed money in London, on the idea that her mother will die, and then she will get the, uh, the her, her, hereditary, hereditary thing, and she will pay you them back. And she was moving on this high society of London. She knew Ma, Ma, uh, Mardox, what, what is the, the, the name of... Huh? No, no, Ma, uh, Ma, Mardok. Mardok. The paper man. Yeah. Mardok. Because he said, uh, I know him and uh, maybe you like to write something and things like that. And she, she, she made it all blew up. And the man who telephoned actually is a man who is uh, on the aristocracy in London, in Athens, etc. On these circles. <laughs> and uh, of course I did not connect all of that together at the moment I was taking the case, but I just saw some symptoms, I don't remember what, led me to the idea of platina, ask her about and confirm that she was a platina case because of so many, so, so much need for, uh, for release on the sexual level. Uh, what actually happened is that after the remedy, ah, she, she, she had the painkillers, eh? and she was monitored by a hospital in London. So I said, okay, <laughs> I, I can give you a remedy, but you are taking all this medicines that you take for painkillers, the medicine is, is not going to act. She said, oh, don't worry, I'll leave the medicine. <laughs> I said, you cannot leave the medicine because you will scream from pain. You will scream, you know, you have metastasis. You know, the bone pain in cancer is terrible, for those that you know. I said, you cannot leave. No, no, I'll leave it. I said, it's your responsibility. I don't know anything. Okay, take the remedy. It takes the remedy. Next, takes the remedy. Stops the painkillers. She telephones after a week or something. She says, "I'm very well." <laughs> I said, "You do not have pains?" No. Thank God. She telephones after a month. No pains. I'm very well. You know, no pains. No. This is very strange. <laughs> and then she telephoned one day after a few months. She telephoned very early in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, something like this. I wake up and she says, she was screaming. She says, I broke, I broke a bone. I said, how did you break a bone? I don't know. I just moved and broke my bone uh, because it was a terrific pain. And I said, I said, it's not possible. I mean, I know that people who have such pains, they think that they broke a rib, or this is the, the impression. I said, what to do, what to do now? Okay, take a dose of tenem, platinum tenem. She takes that platinum tenem and call me tomorrow. She calls me tomorrow, I'm better. No pain, no pain, no pain. Very strange. She, she goes to the hospital, she throws the crutches, 
the crutches she was trying to walk. She threw the crutches after a few months, she goes to the hospital and she performs in front of the doctors, she was dancing. She said, you could do nothing, now I'm taking homeopathy, and she started <laughs> dancing. <laughs> I said, oh my God, they will kill me. <laughs> they will kill me. And then, and then one day, she telephones after uh, eight months, nine months, she says, my eye, the one eye, is bulging out, it's coming out. <laughs> because the tumor was pushing out the eye. <laughs> I said, <laughs> again, okay, you take uh, Platina 50M. <laughs> Platina 50M, the eye, the eye went back. <laughs> And then she called me with some pains in the abdomen. Tremendous pains in the abdomen. And then I changed the remedy. I, I gave another two or three remedies until she became quite well and she did not call me anymore. Then a year or two years passed and I did not hear from her. Then I'm in London and I called the woman who had originally telephoned me. I said, what happened? With this case, it's a long time. She has not phoned. She said, it's a very sad story. What happened? Her mother died. But before dying, her mother gave all the money, all her money, to a, a foundation so nothing will be left for her daughter. She received the news, mother died, no money left, but she was borrowing the money, she has borrowed thousands and thousands of done. So what she did, she went into a restaurant, she ordered a very nice food, very good restaurant, very nice food, she took poison and committed suicide. 